Yo, what's good y'all? Welcome back to the lab. Happy Mobile Monday. I know last week I kind of missed out. I was super busy and this week I'm actually going to show you guys something very simple and easy to do. We are going to be shooting and editing a hyperlapse shot on the phone and then edit it on my iPad. I've been editing this one video on my iPad for the past couple weeks and I came across this a uh, little trick and I just wanted to share this with you guys because it's super short, super simple and if you're interested in learning this technique, please keep watching. If not... Alright, first step is you need to shoot 4K at 24 frames on a native app. Next step is you need to decide whether you're going to wrap around things or go straight through. When you're wrapping around it requires a little more patience because it's a little more difficult. I would highly suggest you just go straight through things. For this example, we're going to go straight through things. So I'm currently editing on this application called LumaFusion. LumaFusion is a $20 piece of software that's available for iOS and Android. And this is sort of what the result looks like that I showed earlier. And I wanted to give you guys a little behind the scenes as to how easy it was for me to edit. So if I could pull up the original clip, if I could play it back, this is what it looks like. So you notice if I play it back in slow motion, uh, you kind of just want to have that center area of focus and you kind of want to go into things or out of things so you notice that i stopped in black even if you reverse it you could come out even if i wanted to duplicate this clip and just let it go repeatedly it'll kind of have like that smooth transition so how did we get this look if i could grab this shot from scratch i'm just going to create a new project i'm going to go here make a new project and I'm just gonna call this hyperlapse test and then you want to make the frame rate probably 24 frames or 23.98 um, everything you could sort of leave as is but I have been editing in a 10-bit space uh, no HDR for this just based off of the video that I want to create and I just want to do add right here in the top right and then I want to look for that hyperlapse clip that I originally shot and as you notice I started from the top because it kind of just gives me a fade to white if I wanted to and then I kind of just liked how it was a straight shot. And when I started from here, I knew that there was gonna be some kind of endpoint, but I wasn't sure what it was gonna be. So I kind of just walked and just kept walking. And then you notice right here in the center, I had just center focus and it makes it easy to transition to the next scene. So as I'm going, 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 and then now I end at black. And I just keep it there for a couple seconds. And I'm using a gimbal. I'm using the DJI Osmo Mobile 4. And if you keep it in the normal mode, it lo pretty much locks the horizontal plane. So everything's always straight. And then you just try your best to just walk in a straight line. You notice that right here, these girls uh, stopped. And this is my walking path. And I just slightly moved over to the left. And I overheard them saying like, oh, I've seen one of those before. They're kind of cool. And, all right, so I'm just gonna add this whole clip to the timeline first. How long is this clip? Let's see. This whole clip is a minute long. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go and speed it up. And all you need to do is just double click or double tap and go over here to the speed. And then you want to do this six times or just max it out. And then when you max it out, you'll notice that it now looks like this. Oops, let me turn off the volume on this. Let's turn off the volume so it is not so squeaky. All right, now when I play it back, it looks like this. All right, so still not fast enough. I pretty much been looking up on Google, other videos, and I couldn't find a solution. So what I did was I exported this clip on its own. So I'm just gonna save this to my iPad. I wanna change the resolution to ultra. I don't know if that actually makes a difference. And the video codec, I kinda just wanna keep everything the same. Uh, I changed this to MOV and everything is at 4K. And then I just wanna hit export. As this is exporting, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do next. Now, after that is exported, you have a pretty much a sped up one minute clip that's sped up into 10 seconds. So the clip you just exported, you wanna to add to the timeline. Now we have two 10 second clips that are equivalent. And then the magic and what's gonna happen next is we're going to double click again. We're gonna speed it up again. So you notice that you can't go past six times, depending on how long your clip is. I didn't want to do six times again because it would just be too fast. 
but this could go according to the way that you shot it. So maybe two times, let's do two and a half. All right, that looks better. Now I'm going to add the blur, motion blur effect. And this is easily accomplished by pretty much the same area where you can speed it up. You wanna go over here to the effects on the bottom right. Click here to the color and effects. And then you go right here. You go right here to the top right. And then I went with short zoom. Short zoom and then I set it to, did I do short zoom? I was just playing around with these actually, to be honest. Zoom looks a little too much, but I think short zoom is what I did. But you could, you know, play around with this and your clips will obviously look different than mine, but let's just do short zoom and let's keep it at eight. You don't have to follow your steps exactly. It's just depends on how you like it to look. And then when I play it back, it should look something like this. So if I could break this down from the very beginning, we started here from the one minute clip, then we sped it up times six, and then we got to this, and then we sped it up again times two and a half, and we added the motion blur. And you notice as I'm playing this back, it's not rendering, my iPad isn't heating up, well, iPads don't really heat up, but it's playing back smoothly. And if I would have done this on my computer, it would have taken a lot longer. This is where I actually used it. Let's play this for you guys. And I literally just transitioned it from the black, pretty much going into the other side and a POV shot of just going in. Uh, so I got a full video on the way. Stay tuned for that. So that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to teach you guys. Super simple, easy to do. All you need is a phone and a gimbal. And you can edit the footage either directly on your phone or you could transfer it to your iPad and edit it on your iPad. So I hope that you enjoyed this tip and I hope that this helps you on your mobile videography journey. Let me know down in the comments below if it worked for you, if you tried it out and it worked for you. And if you have any questions, I'll be commenting down below. Aside from that, I'll holler at y'all on the next video. All right.